it was the first time they brought everybody together. It was 500 people meeting in Vegas. Um, they hired me to keynote and do some breakouts. And it went really well. And then um, they brought me down four months later to give my findings and recommendations of what I saw at the conference. And, um, and they said, bring your credentials. You know, We want to do more work with you. So I knew what they needed for sales. So I started talking about key accounts selling the VP who controlled $2 billion at stock. And he goes to his five subordinates. If he talks about key account selling, what are they going to do? I said, okay, we also need major account. After three times, I decided, you know what? They're not buying what I'm saying, even though they asked me to come down here. So I closed the PowerPoint and I said, I'm confused. You asked me to come down and give you my, my, my credentials. I'm doing it. Yet you're telling me that what I'm here to talk to you about, you're not interested in. And then that VP taught me a couple of amazing at life lessons. The first thing he said is, Ron, I'm like every other client you have. We bring people in like you to come in and speak to our people. And do we ever follow through in what you do? No. So you become the flavor of the month. I have a $2 billion merger. I can't afford a flavor of the month. I said, okay. And then he said this. He goes, I need to unify this merger. It's disparate right now. There's only one person who I know wrote this book. And it's called The Titan Principle. It's a really good book and it's a process. And that's when it clicked in me. And I realized he wasn't buying me to speak or consult. He wasn't buying me to present the Titan Principle for the sake of the Titan Principle. He was looking to bring the Titan Principle in as a unifying process that would make his merger work. So when I got to understand the real motivations behind it, it allowed us to get into a really good conversation. And then I said, okay, so what do you suggest? He goes, well, I suggest we bring you into Chicago and we have all our management team meet you there, but I need you to do one thing. And I go, what's that? He goes, you're a speaker. I go, yeah, don't speak. I go, what? He goes, look, if we want to change people and change a way, we need to engage them. So create the program, but make sure they're really engaged. And so we identified what the four key areas that we had to address in that meeting for two days. And then simply I created a module on each area, broke them into teams, we processed it. Bottom line, like you just said it a minute ago, they did most of the talking. I did most of the facilitating. The funny thing is when the evaluations came in, they called me the best speaker they ever heard. And you didn't so, say much. So, I didn't, well, I mean, I said something, I was presenting the modules, but they did most of the talking in hours, you know, but the point is they were having the issues addressed. That's why they felt it so valuable. And that's why they agreed to go with the bigger contract. Hmm. Yeah. And it, because, and uh, gosh, it goes back to what we were saying. Um, first of all, you listening to what the real issue was. Yeah. And, and let's define listening. How, how, yeah, go ahead and do that. Cause I haven't, I have a follow-up question. That Sorry. Find listening. What is listening? Hearing is when you take the word someone says, and you try to construct it in your world is how you see it. Listening is when you put your world aside and you're hearing the words from their world. 